guys, I meant to start my vlog earlier, but I clearly didn't get that clip, so I started around 7. <laughs> and later a seminal figure in politics. But as a pro wrestling heel, Ventura used his confident cocksure delivery, especially for drawing heat. Ventura learned one night in Eugene, Oregon, just how much trouble his mouth could get him into. After one of Ventura's matches, there was a fight at ringside and the police on hand went to intervene, leaving Ventura alone to walk to the locker room. Just before the body made it to the curtain, a 16-year-old kid emerged from behind the bleachers, whom Ventura had described as white with rage. Ventura believes he may have insulted him earlier in the match and this kid was now armed with a hunting knife that boasted a 10 inch blade the teenager reportedly said ventura i'm gonna stick this up your ass even with his navy seal training ventura couldn't envision a scenario where he could subdue the kid without leaving himself open to be seriously hurt fortunately a plainclothes officer happened to be in the crowd saw what was happening and managed to sneak up on the kid before anything regrettable could happen number five Ole anderson one of the founding four horsemen Ole anderson may well have been the all-time toughest member of a group that's had its fair share of roughnecks, including Arn Anderson, Barry Windham, and even a Pro Bowl defensive lineman in Steve McMichael. Anderson's grit was put to the test one night in Greenville, South Carolina in 1976, after he and kayfabe brother Gene had just concluded an NWA World Tag Team title bout. As the Andersons made their way up the aisle, an elderly fan named Oscar Ramsey, listed by some sources as being 82 years old at the time, stabbed Ole in the arm and chest with a hawkbill knife, a utility blade that has a very pronounced curve. Anderson was taken to a local hospital where he would undergo four hours of surgery to repair torn tendons in his arm and receive dozens of stitches to the multiple wounds in his arm and torso. To demonstrate Ole Anderson's toughness, he was back at work two nights later for a Mid-Atlantic Wrestling TV tapings. Number four, Jim Cornette. Well, you know Corny had to be in here somewhere. You don't romanticize the territory days of wrestling like Jim Cornette does without having at least one good and that's how my life was nearly compromised campfire tale. The Louisville lip is chock full of incredible tales and indeed he recalls a time in Huma, Louisiana in which he and Midnight Expresser Dennis Condry ran afoul of a dozen Cajun fans that in Cornette's words had decided they didn't like the Midnight Express. The parking lot skirmish was escalated by Condry telling off the lead drunk among the pack. Said drunk fan flung an unopened beer at Condry, missed him and ended up getting taken down hard to the ground, where lover boy Dennis kicked him in the face. The other 11 rowdies were prepared to intervene, and Cornette, armed with his tennis racket, knew the odds were not in he and Condry's favor. Before it could get uglier, the Rock and Roll Express drove their car toward the mob, sending the mob scurrying away and allowing their on-screen nemeses a chance to get into the car and flee into the night. Number three, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Given the caliber of villain that has already graced this list, it should come as no surprise that pro wrestling's pre eminent manager had at least one notable attempt on his life. Fans of WWE in the latter half of the 1980s were more prone to innocently chanting Weasel as a means of getting at Heenan. If only life in the AWA were that simple for the brain. In January 1975 at Chicago's International Amphitheater, Heenan was backing his main charge Nick Bockwinkel for a match against champion Vern Gagne. And naturally Heenan took to interfering. This enraged one particular fan who produced a gun and began firing at the manager. Heenan managed to avoid the bullets but a reported five ringside fans were injured, one of them critically. Heenan recalled hearing the attacker say just prior to the shots, don't worry, I'll get him down. Bockwinkle remembers fans rushing over to aid one of the fans, a woman who was struck in the shoulder. Incredibly, the fan was never arrested and reportedly kept attending shows after that, which is, well, insane. Number two, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Another name you'd expect on such a list is that of the Hot Rod, who thoroughly enjoyed being a villainous heat magnet at many points in his career. Few wrestlers could whip crowds into the heated frenzy that Piper could, and even fewer were willing to cross the boundary lines needed to earn such murderous scorn. But Piper breached many lines in his career and sometimes paid the price for it. Piper has claimed to have been stabbed a total of three times in his career, and says that the worst such incident occurred in Raleigh, North Carolina, 
arena in the early 80s. Outside the actual arena, a knife-wielding fan was menacing Piper from a distance, getting Roddy's attention. This Piper went is to the grab a pole to defend one. himself, but when he temporarily took his eyes off the blade, the fan lurched forth and plunged the knife into Piper's torso, reportedly coming within an inch of Piper's heart. Piper remembers the police subduing the attacker, and one cop was fixing to shoot him in I figured I'd try it on a bitter one, so I started with the yellow. And we'll go from there. That's my you know, first birthday, and then I did a smaller version and a bigger version. I mean, it looks so good when they're completely dry. I'm so excited. And those are the shoes I designed last week. I haven't worn them yet. Hasn't been nice to the coat yet, and also can't really leave the house, so. Oh no, we're at the moment I've been getting up for like a half hour a day. That's pretty much it. For like the last like 14 days we've done like since this thing started so anyway currently 9 40 something or whatever anyway i was close on the time at least so that's good um getting ready for bed lights are off because i'm done filming now for the day we don't have the very best of Celtic Thunder on stage. And of course, I'm referring to our good friend and colleague, George Donaldson. Anyway, um, I'm about to go and take my big food from dinner. I've got to see that there. Then I'm going to get my jams on. Got my outfit figured out for tomorrow. Something comfortable. Because we're not really going anywhere, I'm sure. So, yeah. Every day. You know, All right, George, see you guys in the morning. Good night. Okay, so I took pieces of paper and rolled it on there, and that's the result of one. It's the first one I did. And then over there is the second one. Honestly, I can't believe how good it turned out. I'm so happy. So happy with the results of those. Oh my gosh. Woo! That's really zoomed in. I'm sorry. Alright, so I'm going to go to bed. I'm hot. Dying of heat. So I may take off my pajama pants because I'm hot. And I also don't have my fan on right now either. So that's probably not helping. It's a really small space. So I might just put on my fan. And we'll see if that changes anything. But I don't well so good night currently printing pictures instead of spending money at walmart <laughs> it died in my face oh boy didn't do that you went along you did business which was a great thing so uh really really great story and if you want to hear more again go buy bobby both of bobby's books pay me pay me and i kicked out onto the education of a wrestler at tinyurl.com slash bttamazon i have enough footage bye-bye